Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast. Artificial intelligence can help you select and protect a brand. In this episode, we're going to tell you how. I'm Wayne Carroll, your host, here to share valuable insights, stories, and strategies for succeeding in intellectual property. Let's dive into the game of IP and learn how to win. This podcast is not legal advice, but is strictly educational and informational. Listening to this podcast or reading show notes does not establish an attorney-client relationship. The world changed through COVID. One clear change is the number of trademarks filed in the United States. The number has more than doubled. Trademark office is backed up and they're working hard to get enough examiners to work on that back, that backlog and but that also indicates that trademarks are more crowded there are more people trying to find a brand that works for them and there are more conflicts happening but how do you prevent that how do you work through it and select your brand or your business that's not going to be a problem with others well here's a guide to using artificial intelligence to select and protect your brand. The first thing really is you need to know who you are. I have been working with Entrepreneur Operating System. It's one of many, uh, one that I really like, many business uh, development systems. And with the Entrepreneur Operating System or EOS, they guide they, they have guided our company and they guide thousands of companies through a process to figure out what are their core values and list those out and make them part of the company or make them more acknowledged in the company. You want to discover what they are. Um, and if that needs to change, then you really need to change the business. Uh, writing down what is the purpose of the business? What is the cause or the passion and what is it? What is the value you bring to customers? Writing these things down will help you determine what is going to work for your brand, and it's also going to help you in your business as you want to continually look back at these and say, "Yes, that's where I'm headed." And your brand can be part of that. What is your niche? What does your business look like in ten years from now? I've met several business owners that have selected a name that really had big like global and global dreams in the name when they started out of their garage but they kept that name helped keep them focused and they built it they they became that global or that large thing because it was in their name it constantly reminded them that that's what they were working to achieve so these are some of the things you want to gather um you may also want to be gathering what is your target market who are they is there what what are good ways to describe them and um and what are your uniques what kind of competitive advantage do you have what is it that um they can't get anywhere else. The customers can't get anywhere else your combination of what you do and what you offer. So those are things that you want to gather first. And once you've gathered that, you can uh, start to, to describe it, write it out in a document, and then you can you can use AI to start hunting. So first step was gathering. The second step is hunting. Now, currently, as we talked about in the last episode, um, chat GPT is going to learn from whatever you tell it. So these things we've been discussing is confidential information. There are more and more opportunities to use AI without disclosing the information, without training the AI. Those are going to cost and right now you need a developer to implement a system for you um, and then you're going to pay per query um, i expect these are, are going to be coming out sooner and sooner this is all very new um, here in june of 2023 but as that happens then you can 
move forward with this strategy if you want to take the risk and put some or parts of your um who you are as it which may be considered confidential information for you 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 can put into uh chat gpt and understand that it's it's learning and it's training so you you can use ai to direct efforts to strong trademarks let me discuss uh, as we've discussed before what a strong trademark is strong trademark defined by the trademark office and the, and the courts are ones that are arbitrary or fanciful apple is a great example of arbitrary it's a it's a word we know what an apple is but the fruit apple has nothing to do with computers so when applied to computers the word apple is arbitrary that makes it a strong trademark um, fanciful is a made-up word. It might be a combination of two words, like Starbucks. Yeah, it's a made-up word. And so you can actually put uh, parameters into the AI. As an example, I asked ChatGPT to suggest 10 arbitrary or fanciful trademarks for a business with the following attributes. And I list oh, and I asked it where the dot com URL is available. So I gave it some core values, team players, can do attitude, learn and improve, customer service, reliable, do the right thing. Uh, I gave it some um, three uniques. So I, I just grabbed some different ones from the web. I wasn't ready to put my own in there, but um, and then it gave me 10 suggestions. And when I looked into uh, the 10 suggestions, because I asked it for 10, um, I double-checked through GoDaddy, and the, the names were actually available. Some of them were premium domains, um, which means GoDaddy says, yes, you can have this, but you're going to pay three or $4,000. Sometimes it's a couple hundred dollars. Sometimes it's less than hundred dollars. So it varies all over the place. And you can repeat this process, um, which is often what you need to do in a trademark hunt, trying to find a trademark that works for you and your company that describes who you are. There are professionals that work through this process with you. Um, and that's one way to do it confidential, confidentially. And contact me if if you want to go through that process. That's not what I do, but I'm connected with people who do that, who work with you on who you are, what do you want to say about yourselves in your brand, how's that brand going to help focus your uh, culture, your vision, your execution, and then you know compares what's available, what's going to work, and when you have a usually what often happens is there will end up being a list that look like they work maybe three maybe 10 potential trademarks so now the um part of the hunt is actually going to be working with ai to do some searching so we have a tool that we pay for access to that's an ai where we can search multiple trademarks at a time and start with a broad search in terms of um, getting a real quick response of yes or no on brands and then go deeper as we narrow down our options. So that's where an AI is. We are currently using it because it's a paid subscription. It's We're not risking confidential information by using that as ChatGPT would. And um, of course, they're tied in very carefully to the current databases of the Patent and Trademark Office in, in the United States. Um, so once the, the trademark has been selected, first thing I recommend to do is secure that domain name. And, and of course, keeping this confidential before is, is very important. I have had clients tell me that they had selected a name, they filed the trademark themselves before grabbing the .com. And the next day, they went to grab it and somebody already had and, and wanted 
hundreds or thousands of dollars to buy it when they could have gotten it for five to twenty dollars for a year and so that actually does happen so as you are going through this process the names you're selecting you do want to keep that confidential so other people don't try to undermine you or take advantage of you um and the once you've secured the domain name you want to work with also make sure the trademark search you're doing looks at common law or what's actually in use and you can file for the trademark we recommend if you're going through this process file for the trademark as soon as you've made a decision and have secured the domain name and other necessary assets you don't have to use the brand before you file and you know i believe we've we've discussed this on previous podcasts about an intent to use filing and it's it has a lot of advantages um you want to launch your brand complete the trademark process which right now is going to take a year or more uh to be completed and then once it's it's registered you can use ai tools to track other people's use and monitor and enforce your trademark rights as you need to uh, one of the tools we use also does offer monitoring so we can get regular reports on here's who's filed a trademark in in your category that might be close to your name so we can just review those quickly on a regular basis and decide is this something we need to take action on send a cease and desist letter or just watch it to see what's happening so there was a, a lot of AI involved in this process. And I know this week we've gone through all some of the scary things of AI. So I wanted to end with um, a uh, use case and application that we're actually using AI to a certain degree in the business. Of course, constantly um, double checked and um, verified by humans, experts, and it enhances our ability to get our job done rather than we're not being replaced. Uh, I'm Wayne Carroll, and this is Leveraging Inspiration. If they actually look at the data and go into sparing with their colleagues, which are electrician, electricians or electric engineers, 